Nick that, that tired to work on King mm -hmm. when he got home. And then somebody told me that he that he killed himself down in Myrtle Beach one weekend. Because 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 he couldn't take he couldn't take he couldn't take he couldn't take, he couldn't take that. I know that I gotta talk about it. I know I gotta get through with it. I know what, you know, there's the after effect and, 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 and then the fucking nightmares are gonna start again. The intrusive thoughts are gonna start again and I'm gonna replay this whole thing all over again. But I know eventually I have to because I'm gonna destroy it or it's gonna destroy me. I've tried everything. Uh, medications from doctors, which I don't want to be on, I want to be naturally healthy. And uh, I've tried talking about my problems, but it's just all it does is bring them back up and I think about them at night. The dichotomy is so great between what I was when I went in and what I became after I got out, that it's, um, it's, um, it's a very, very messy, very messy situation inside of my head a lot of times. We are targeting the acupuncture meridians, and the meridians, as you know, are these non-physical pathways that run longitudinally in the body. And one way that I think of the, of the acupuncture points is that they are portals or entryways, not just into our emotional reality, but into our energetic reality. And so, if you want to affect people deeply, we need to touch them, so to speak, on an energetic level. When human beings are under stress, they naturally rub or touch or tap parts of their bodies. So we found that if we tap or rub or touch these points in sequence, and there are about 14 of them on the body, that it has a remarkable effect in reducing our stress. What we first do is we pair our memory of a traumatic incident with a positive statement of self-acceptance. I'm the shock of that. I'm the shock of that. But I'm still here. But I'm still here. And I love and accept myself. And love and accept myself. While you're saying that, you then rub or tap or touch each of these points in sequence. And it's quite amazing to watch people because their emotional charge around that negative memory just deflates like a balloon. What I wanted to do was sort of kill two birds with one stone. I wanted to get some vets here. I wanted to really help them. I wanted to show everybody what we could do with this process so that the public will start pushing the VA and pushing the therapy fields and pushing the hospitals and so on to use this non-invasive, easy to use, uh, astonishingly successful technique. I purposely invited two doctors, one a psychologist, one a psychiatrist. I'd seen the five days at the VA uh, video and found it enlightening. I also, in a very selfish way, thought, my God, I'll be exposed to some of the premier EFTers in the world, and I could watch and learn something here. Actually, I heard that Gary was going to be working with vets and um, contacted him because I was interested in that population. I married uh, just before we went. And, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it was King who went back to the, to the deuce and a half and you had to crawl, you know, up there. And when that pile went off, it cut his fucking legs right off. Why do you think that's true? That you shouldn't be having feelings about it? Because you drive on, airborne drive on, right? Okay. Can I do a little bit on that? 
Even though I have to be perfect. Even though I have to be perfect. And I can't show my feelings. I can't show my feelings. What am I doing showing my feelings? What am I doing showing my feelings? I gotta drive on. I have to drive on. No wonder I feel vulnerable. No wonder I feel vulnerable. No wonder I have this tightness in my body. No wonder I have this tightness in my body. No wonder I feel exposed. No wonder I feel exposed. And many of them had other kinds of, of uh, traumas that cover the whole spectrum of, of life from early childhood through recent time. In, in Andy's case, um, the w just the way he presented himself, you know, he told us that when he was a little boy, four or five years old, that this was the time when his soul left the body. He talked about the fact that his, his father was very domineering, not loving at all. In fact, he called him Jack, not dead. In the room, I felt as if my father was there <clears throat> and um, Ingrid kind of got up and went over to him and just took my, my childhood and my, my power as a person away from him as if he was sitting right there and handed them to me in just that one session. Andy is very hypervigilant. He always knows where people are in a restaurant. He was aware at all times of the ladies talking in the booth behind him. He was aware of the people behind me. But as we had this lunch, and as we step, started tapping on various issues, it got better and better. That we were able to sit there in a restaurant, and I enjoyed the meal. If we were to go back to some other restaurant, would you have the same hesitancy? Estimate in percentage terms. I'd have 20% oh, yeah, less? No, or? I'd say 50% less. I haven't felt this good doing cocaine. I haven't felt this good drinking. I just hope the people would just take it, just try it, just try it once. I'm terrified of heights. I will not climb a ladder. Um, even things at work that I wouldn't do, I am terrified of heights. So he had set up to go over to the uh, embassy, embassy hotel. And we got there, and when we got on the glass elevator, I turned my back to the, you know, to the door so I wouldn't have to look out. You know, to some people it may, you know, sound funny and stuff, you know, how could it be? But even that, even though we were only like five stories up, I mean, I was shaking. It took us, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes of going back and forth. We tapped through, you know, each one of them until finally he gets there and he looks over and he says, I'm holding on here fairly tight, but I'm about 95% done with this. And that actually set up the ability for us to work on one of his more intense memories, one that he calls this behind his personal wall and we took a direct hit and it pretty much destroyed most of the hospital. There was just, there was just nothing but blood and body parts and <laughs> I can smell it, I can taste it, and I can see it. We were trying to pull people out and I pulled somebody out from underneath the rubble and all I pulled out was half of them. And you go for somebody else and you hear somebody screaming and the place is dark and you were picking up parts. I, I can see it like it was here, like, you know, it's in front of me. And I've had flashbacks about them. And I never want to go back there. I wake up, like now I'm sweating. I am fucking sweating my... Right, stay with me, just stay with me. It's just... Okay, just stay with me, just be quiet. I feel like I'm... I'll throw up. You what? I'm gonna throw up. He came back, his face was ashen and everything, and we just kept tapping on it. What other pieces of this memory are showing up? The, the sight, the sound, what? Mostly the body parts and the blood and the smell. I can feel it, you can see it. Okay, all right, here. Even though I have this, this blood and these body parts. Even though I have these bloods and body parts. In my mind. In my mind. In my memory. In my memory. It's a long time ago. It's a long time ago. It's not really here right now. It's not really here with me. The next day we collapsed it still further and further and further till he would just talk about it like it was nothing. We just started pulling bodies out. And how many you know, bodies were there? I think all total there was um, 15 killed. I, you know, it's amazing how I feel right now. I can actually, I can actually talk about it calmly. I would say that I've never seen anything that can start with a symptom of very high anxiety, <clears throat> of insomnia, of hyperarousal, um, 
and have that disappear in the course of a few days' time. That, that's extraordinary. And I mean this sincerely, especially, you know, talking to, you know, brother vets and, and veterans. If you want to try EFT, I'm sure there's a way that they'll let you know about it and give it a shot because I'm living proof of this, you know, so uh, hang in there. There was an Iraqi, he had a machine gun as well, firing at me, and uh, his weapon jammed, and I got the first shot off. That was the first time I ever killed anyone. And I never wanted to ever harm anyone or ever have to go through that situation. Carlin couldn't see a future for himself. He couldn't get past being stuck of where, where he was because of the nightmares and the, he just couldn't go there. Carlin, when he showed up that first night, was very tense, uh, very skeptical. Uh, he was, by his own terms, drinking himself to sleep every night because his nightmares would get to him so badly. It's amazing what I was doing with, with alcohol. Like some people would deal with like deep drugs. Yes. It was like I'd wake up and drink, and I'd drink the entire day. And and the the lack of hope has sent him into, I can't do this life. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back. I have to go back. I have to re-enlist. That's all I know. That's all I know how to do. There are people bringing up stuff they've never talked or exposed to anybody else. They are touching affect that's like the atomic bombs of their mind. There is a small child walking up to a uh, post, and he just blew up. He blew up, and yep. you know, arms and legs went everywhere. Okay. How do you feel when you tell me that? Uh, pretty sick. I don't know where I'd be if I wasn't able to tap on myself hearing what this young man has had to put up with. Because hearing the women screaming yeah. and the girls, like the children screaming with yeah. them mm -hmm. and looking at us like, you know, y'all are here, y'all are reason why my child's dead. And then helping him take piece by piece, unpack it and dilute it. And so that was exhilarating because within a day, he's not smoking. He doesn't care about the drinking. And I said to him, well, because we've taken care of what you needed to completely obliterate with alcohol and cigarettes. What would you say? Say the screaming of the women and children, uh, zero. Zero. It's gone. Good. So are they all zero? Yes. Brains. I don't feel guilty for... No guilt. Okay. Brains splattered all over the floor. Right. Zero. Blood everywhere? Zero. Body parts all over you? Zero. Okay, and it's my fault? Zero. Great. So no nightmares? No nightmares. Uh, woke up feeling good. Great. How is your jaw today? It's, I don't feel any pain. And the neck that is usually, I know, from the jaw? Right. Is that it's okay? zero. Yeah. Okay, how are your hands? It's you better doing? than yesterday. That is much better, I can see that. Yeah. That's the tremor. Uh, before I did the EFT thing, for me to say, uh, I'm happy, that would just be weird for me to say, just to say out loud to myself, and I say it like, probably like 10 times a day now. And I saw this lieutenant trying to move, and I tried to get to the helicopter and, and grab his foot to see if I couldn't pull him out. But the, um, the flames were just too high. They, um, it just burned and basically blew up. And we so we sent back the three body bags. I had chosen to leave my husband mm -hmm. because the, um, he was getting very, almost like a lot of violence. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he was um, threatening to shoot the children and me on a consistent basis. Because yeah. of the PTSD? Yes. We all lie to you because we're afraid of you, not because we want to lie to you or because we hate you. We love you, but if we tell you the truth, you get angry about situations, very angry. A person comes back with PTSD and it can destroy the family. You have a person now who is not sleeping, who becomes abusive, who becomes addicted to drugs and alcohol. So you have families torn apart. Maybe it's been too many years. Maybe it's been too long a time. Maybe I've caught wreaked too much havoc inside of my life and uh, that of my children, my wife, and everybody else around me. 
Is he's a veteran and he has had all the symptoms and yes. and, and, and we've been in, in the psych ward for years. I've been I've had therapy and in three days we're talking. And we could we haven't talked in five years, really talked and had a conversation. These men should have their families supporting them on a consistent basis for many years. They shouldn't lose their wives, they shouldn't lose their children because they serve this country. I, can, I can't emphasize enough how, how important it is that you can actually feel like a real person again and not be afraid and not be not have to cover up all of your junk every single day of your life. But what are you doing something new that people don't have a frame of reference for? You have a, you have a higher burden of proof. And I think, in fairness to the public, you should have a higher burden of proof. While Gary Craig was working with the veterans you're seeing on this video, I was also gathering data on their psychological and mental conditions. Their scores on standard measures of PTSD used by the military was 63% between before the event and after that week of treatment. Their scores for anxiety and depression dropped by more than half and when we retested them at points in the future, they held most of those gains. While we say clinically, look, what we notice is, I'm sitting with my client who's got a traumatic issue going on, and the client, I'll call it down-regulates, returns to center, calms. That's observable, it's obvious. But if you can show that there's an immediate cortisol change, and cortisol is a chemical that's being used to measure stress response, then you're not just saying it's an observation, which maybe we could argue about, did that happen or not, but we can say it's that plus there was a physiological change. You looked at people's cortisol levels before and after one hour of treatment with either EFT or regular psychotherapy or no treatment at all. We discovered that with EFT, people's cortisol levels drop by an average of 25% in a single hour People like me, who were very, very skeptical about energy psychology methods in the beginning, have become very, very enthusiastic about them because of one thing and one thing only. It's called results. It is my conviction that EFT should be in every VA center in the country. But they're just not able to do this job for the vets with conventional stuff. But we've got the most incredible, powerful healing tool that this planet has ever seen, and we need to get it to the people who need it. On this website, if you click on the Find Help button, you will find lists of therapists both inside the VA system and also in private outpatient clinics that treat veterans with PTSD. Most of these therapists will treat people at low cost or no cost. They'll also treat the families of PTSD veterans because living with someone with PTSD can be very, very difficult. These energy psychology methods in general, EFT in specific, are uncanny in their ability to produce results really rapidly. I don't know any place anywhere that would take on this group of folks with all of these challenges, and yet we were able to help I can't think there's a single person we didn't help materially.